Hey guys. Hey guys. It's me. Trying to tag you here. Oops. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> hey. It's me, Alicia. I'm going to be doing. I'm not crazy enough to play Chapter 1 Shadow. I created from Shadow. So, um, I did say that I am going to be uh, doing it again. Because in, when I was doing it before, um, it was like really quiet and the only way you could hear it was like if you had a laptop or a computer and you kind of had to put it in a medium, a, a medium volume on your computer, not on like the YouTube or something, on like the computer computer. So yeah, I'm going to be reading this story and like always I say, this is bad, 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 bad language. So yeah, let's go ahead and get on with the video, shall we? We shall. It may sound a little quiet, but I'll try to speak as loud as possible for you guys. I'm not crazy. Except the Chapter 1. Written by Shadow. Why are you exactly? Oops. Um, also... I know I'm just about to read the story and then I start talking about other stuff. I am going to be pronouncing words wrong. I'm very sorry about that. But if I start reading more and more of this, like, stories, then probably later on in the future, i probably be way better and not have less corrections. So there is going to be corrections, so sorry about that. But, yeah. Why are you here exactly? The man looked up at Mark with a raised eyebrow. Mark swung back and forth on his feet. To guard, I guess. Mark didn't know what else to say. Are you sure? Yes, I saw the fire for the job, so here I am. Mark shrugged and the man sighed, standing slowly, walking around the desk to stand before Mark. Tell me, sir, are you aware of what you are guarding? Yes, kind of. Mark bit his lips, squinting and glancing away in uncertainty. You'll be watching Shana Malcolm. Recognize the name? He rose an eyebrow and Mark swallowed. I know the name, but please tell me, Mark said. Shane. Well, he's like... <sighs> it happened right. Shane. Well, he likes being called Jack. He's a 26-year-old man. From a young age, has been diagnosed with schizoserinone and bipolar disorder, making it difficult for him to for him to around people. He starts to explain walking down a passage guessing for a mark to follow him. His family didn't seem to concern with their son condition, which was reckless and irresponsible. They let him live on a like a normal child, let him go to school and so on. The child at the, his school noticed he different and bullied him, quickly leading to, to him having a great act actioning of social disorder. He spied and Mark bit his lips. One day the blue became too much for him to handle. He was having hard eucomians of what was going on and attacked the child with a pair of scissors, stabbing him repeatedly until the police were able to pull him off, seeing as the teacher couldn't. He has been traveling for one of the installations to others because he cannot be handled whatsoever. So he, so he is here to be made sure that he doesn't, that he does not somehow leave. They stopped in the front of a large third door, Mark gapping at it. But now, let me tell you, we picked those flyers three days ago, and you're the first, fourth person to come and try the drug, he said. And Mark rose the eyebrow. Uh oh. The other gym up after one hour being in Sean's room, he said. 
He said in my gulp. His hand began shaking, stuffing them into a pocket of jeans. So, I asked again, are you sure? He questioned Mark and coughed before he nodded. The man sighed and turned to the door, placing his hand on the handle and pushing it open, revealing a small room where at the far end was an other steel door with a keypad beside it. Mark found, closing the door as the man told him to. His heart rate picking up with each second. I must warn you, Shane is very loud and spontaneous. Don't be surprised if you won't shut up. He mumbled and as, as he typed into the keypad, before the door as he typed into the keypad, before the door clicked open, Mark wa walking in after him. It's a large dark hall. There was was a kitchen set up on one side of the monitoring table with several different plans and controls, panels and controls. But what Mark saw first was a large glass room. Right in the center of the hall, Mark could see a living type of area in the grass, a man laying on the bed with his eyes closed. That would be a shame. He seems to be sleeping, but you can never be too sure now. I wish I could explain what happened, must happen presently, but I'm afraid I cannot. There's a photo on the desk over there which will explain everything you need to know. He said, he said hurriedly, walking towards the door. Oh, also Mark, he said. Mark looked up, looking up at him with a purse, a purse lip. Don't look, listen, or talk to Sean for too long. Why? Who died into his sanity? Uh, Mark said, looking back at him, sounding when he saw the door shut. Uh, Mark turned back to the glass room, getting a slight fright when he saw the man standing right by the glass wall, staring right at him. He had pale skin, blue eyes that seemed to give off the fact that he was not mentally stabbed or stable and faded green hair, making a mark frown slightly. She wore a blue hoodie and gray sweats. Mark could see she was a very skinny and small, which made him wonder how she had strength to pull off, pull off the things he had done. What what put Mark on the, what put Mark on the edge was a wide smile that spread over his face, giving Mark an eerie look, feeling. Hello, he said lowly. I am Mark and pushing his hand against the glass wall. Hey, he said back in a deep voice, watching as he smiled glowed, making his lips. I like your voice. What's the name of the man with the sexy voice, he said, leaning more against the glass. Mark, he said, walking towards the glass room. Nice name, Mark. I'm Shane, but please call me Jack, Shane said, finally stepping away from the glass. His eyes never leaving Mark as he walked up the glass and stood a few feet from it. If you hear screaming or anything, it's because my brothers are here. What happened to Joel? he asked, and Mark frowned, tilting his head. Who's Joel? The last guy, Shane said, with, with a big huff, dropping his knees and looking down at Mark. Why? What did you do to him? Mark asked curiously. Shane grabbed her low in his eyes. He just could have took a joke. Why? I don't know. He was an asshole anyway. Are you an asshole, Mark? Shane glanced back at him, eyeing him suspiciously. I hope not, Mark began, wondering why people say that Shane was so out of control. He seems fine. If you are, then I'm going to enjoy being here, Shane said, standing and turning back to his desk, picking up a green sharpie and drawing on a piece of paper, seeming to abandon the conversation with Mark. Mark pushed his lips and walked to the modern set, 
Get in the photo sitting down and page through it, reading over the page. It seems to grow tired of reading the continuous, do not give this to Shane. Don't say this, don't do this. They understand what she, she was meant to do and how she should do it. Glancing up at Shane who threw pages that, that she had finished drawing on the ground, drawing in other pieces of paper. When Mark had finally finished the reading, finished reading, the large folder, he shut it, sighing and covering his face with his hands, wondering why he had taken this job. Do you agree? Shane suddenly said. Mark looked up, seeing him still sitting in the seat, looking over at him with a question look. What? Mark said. Do you agree? With what? That, I, that I'm in here for no reason, and this place should be burned in hell. He smiled instantly and sending sugar down Mark's spine. Mark didn't, Mark didn't know how to respond. So he said nothing. Don't you agree? Shane gets his teeth together, impatient with my lack of response. I haven't been here so long so, to stay, so I can't really answer your question. Mike said, and Shane calmed down, seeming satisfied with his answer. That's true. I see that you. That's true. I'll ask you later when you least expected. He went, the mark quickly looked away, not wanting to stare into the blue eyes anymore. Do you like the reason? Yes, Mark said with a smile and Shane went, standing and walking to the glass. What's your favorite? He asked. The mark turned and thought. I can't choose one. There's so many. Uh, head up. I'm down. Uh, I'm trying to find the next one. It's kind of weird. I can't choose. There are so many. Mark shrugged and Shane smiled softly. They're the first ones who like video games. Shane said lowly. What do you mean, Mark said? The others didn't like video games. So when they came to feel me, I stabbed them with my sharpie. He smiled childless, my heart caught in his throat. What's the matter, Mark? Ta got your tongue, he said, growling lowly, suddenly slamming his fist on the glass, making Mark flinch. You look scared. Are you scared of me, he gay? Chen said. You think I'm crazy? I'm crazy too, don't you? You think I'm crazy, don't you? He suddenly became eager. I'm not crazy, he screamed. Slamming his fist on the glass once again. I'm not fucking crazy. Do you fucking hear me? Huh, Mark? He said, scream. Mark's eyes written, and his heart beat against his rib. Shane, calm down. Mark stood, but this only made Shane anger. Calm? I'm a calm motherfucker, he yelled, glaring at Mark. Mark walked to the door of the bathroom, Shane wa watching him fiercely. Where are you going, Mark? Are you gonna give up with the, like the fucking other assholes? He yelled, watching him. Mark opened the door and closed it behind him. The time grabbing his, his red lock and sighing loudly, sighing down to the ground, digging his head in his knees as he sat being thankful for the silence that surrounded him. So that was it. Sorry, I kind of, it took a while. But hopefully it's loud. Hopefully. Because this is probably the fifth time I recorded it to make it sound loud. Now, my parents don't know I say bad words. So, um, I try to say it quietly, but also getting close to my thing that I'm using. Because I still can't find the uh, mic, so I try to get close to it. But thank you all for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and comment down below if if you have any stories on Q U O T U B. Because if you do, then I'll probably read it. You can say bad words if I cannot have any 
funny business. The funny business I will actually read when it's like my birthday or Jody's birthday. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next story time. Bye bye!